Hi everybody. Today I'm going to install an RMP uh, light. That's Russell Marine Products uh, makes this light. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to install it here on my uh, Minkota Raptor. Now they do make a similar light for a Talon. Uh, it's going to be a little bit different, but ba the basic same uh, way to do it. So I'm going to show you what's inside this box. So in it. Comes, so here's the actual light, and that's going to be uh, all wired, pre-wired. Uh, what I'm going to do is link this into the existing uh, where, where I normally would put the pole light. So this will be rigged constantly, so I never have to pull the pole light out. Also in the package comes the this would be the left side to the light. This would be the right side. These are going to clip together. And that's the basics of what's in here. Uh, there's also a couple of screws, four screws to be exact, and that's it. So pretty simple. A few tools that you're going to need. You're going to need a, uh, a small Phillips screwdriver. For my boat, I need one of the hex heads uh, to get this mount off, so that's what I need for my boat. You're also going to have to do a little bit of wiring, and the wiring is pretty simple, and I'll walk you right through it. But you're going to need a couple of tools, something to cut your, the wires, something to strip the wires. I've got a little fancier tool, but you, they make all kinds of them. And then something to crimp uh, the wires together. And then I like to use heat shrink, and you're going to need a butt connector. Again, I'll get into those details once we get to that wiring portion. and then you need, if, I, if you're going to use this shrink wrap, you need some way, either matches, a lighter, or I'm going to use a heat gun to, to melt that and shrink that on and make it all watertight. So stick with me and we'll show you how this works. All right, for this install, you're going to want to lower the rafters completely down to the ground. Uh, you'll need that for routing of the wires and just make it easier to access the whole thing. So you're probably going to want to clean this up just a little bit if your raptor is anything like mine. It's getting a road grime and bugs on it and you just want to kind of clean it. When you first put the mount on, it's got some tape to help kind of hold it and that tape's only to help hold it until you get it screwed in. So the tape really isn't that important except at the beginning. So if I had bugs and grime on here, it might be hard for that tape to, to adhere. All right, so here's what the pieces look like and the, the red tape you can see right there. And it's pretty obvious how these are going to fit on. So here's a hole that's going to go over the nut right here. And then this part is going to have to go around the shaft. So I'm going to put these on. I'm going to first kind of dry fit it, so to speak. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is take the tape off each side. Again, the tape is not to hold it forever. The tape is just simply to hold it in place until I get those screws put into there. Of course, I have no fingernails, so it's hard to get the tape off. Okay, there we go. All right, so these are going to clip together. There we go. And I'm just going to kind of squeeze it where that tape is, and yeah, it's holding it just fine. So there's three holes that I'm going to need the screwdriver and the screws for. So again, this is a Phillips head screwdriver. So I just start the first one. And you don't want to over tighten these because this is plastic and you can strip it. So I'm going to get it nice and snug without over tightening. There's the second one. Very, very easy to do. And now the third one. They do give you four of these in case you lose one. And 
I'm just going to give them each a little check. Maybe one extra little rotation, but there we go. That's secure. That's not going to go anywhere. Okay, so, so far this has been very easy. All right, so now the wire, the light comes already pre-wired. So you got some twist ties to take off. So I, I fish quite a few tournaments, and especially in the spring and fall of the year, you're sometimes uh, launching your boat in the dark and you need to have your lights on. Well, in my particular boat, the Vexus, they found a creative place to store the, the pole for the light, which is in the rear compartment. And that's kind of nice, but at the same time, it's not the easiest to get to. Um, so by installing this light, I'll never have to use that pole again. I will keep the pole in the boat in case this were to stop working. All right, so what I need to do is feed this into this hole here. And it's going to start coming through. Now what I'm going to do is pull this all the way through for now. I'm not worried about mounting or uh, rigging this yet, but what I need to do is screw this light in. And it's just threaded, so I'm going to hand screw this in. Here. There it goes. Super easy. There we go. So it's all tightened down. Alright, so now I've got, they give you, I'd say, about 15 feet worth of wire here. Uh, so plenty of wire. So now what I'm going to do is start routing my wires through the shaft. So I'm going to change the angle of the camera so you can see what I'm talking about. Uh, but basically there's only one place to go and there's a little support beam and you want to make sure you go above those support beams. So here's a little better view of what I was talking about. So I'm going to actually route the wires through this area, but you can see the support beam. you can see that hard to find the right angle but there's a beam there that you need to go over Okay, so I had that kind of sped up so you could see the process, but you can see the wires right here and they're above that support. Down in here is the piston and you want to make sure that your wires are not going to be in, in the way of any pinch points. So what I decided to do was bring it out and then back in because right here is the hinge of that piston and that's the place where there could be a pinch point. Now. What you're going to have to do is get some zip ties and what I'm going to do is zip tie this and in my boat it's going to be different for different boats but I'm going to I'm going to attach it to the hydraulics and follow the hydraulics directly into the inside of the boat. So there's no drilling any holes I just have to be able to squeeze it in to either this one or this one and then it's going to be wired. This is where my light receptacle is so I'll have to take this off and then we'll wire it into this. All right, so you can see the black and white. I ran it through here. It took a little bit of a struggle to get it through there, but I did. And I probably overdid it with the zip ties, but I figured it better be safe than sorry. So I'm just gonna trim these up, clip them off, and I am gonna raise and lower the wrapped her a couple times to make sure that the routing was done right before I worry about 
before I start to uh, so I am going to raise and lower the Raptor a couple times just to make sure the routing looks good before I do the wiring And it's looking good. I'm not seeing any, any pinching. Try to bring it back up. Yeah, that looks just fine. All right, so once you've got that done, the next is take off your light receptacle. Again, each boat's gonna have these in a different place. So you're just gonna take yours off. And then once I get these screws out, you're gonna carefully pull the wiring out as far as you can, making sure you don't force anything out and disconnect the wires. Now, I believe the hardest part of this is coming up and simply for me, it's gonna be trying to get access to these wires that I just put in through the, the hydraulic hose and so that's pretty far back, so I'm going to have to probably get a flashlight, get on my belly, um, get my arm way back in there and retrieve the, the white and black wires that came with the, with the light. Okay, so this is loose. And oh, that's about as far as I can take it out. Now they've got a quick disconnect right here with uh, with a fuse and so we want to keep that fuse in there so I'm gonna to have to cut on this side so as I get to the wiring I'll explain how I'm going to do that but I don't want to remove this fuse uh, so again this is gonna be the hardest part coming up it's probably gonna be hard for me to film since I'm gonna be crouching down and trying to get my arm uh, three or four feet back and, and access my wire. So I'll be back once I have that wire fished out. Okay, so as it turns out, that wasn't as hard as I thought it was going to be. Luckily, I was able to push a lot of the wire through and it kind of bunched up and I was able to find it very quickly and easily. So the next thing is you want to shut off any power to your battery because I'm going to be getting into these wires. And again, this has a fuse on it. I do not want to get rid of the fuse. So unfortunately, we're gonna to have to have the fuse and then a connection and then the, uh, the light, but, which is fine. Uh, but I don't wanna take this off. So your boat may be set up differently. Okay, so I don't wanna snip this too close because you want room in case there's a mistake. So I'm gonna go about midway up, clip each of these, and then I'm gonna strip those and you don't need more than about a quarter inch, maybe, yeah, I'd say, I'd say right in the quarter inch range. Okay, so those are stripped. And now I'm gonna do the same with my, the leads that came. These are a little, shorter than I would like, so I'm just gonna take a little more of the coating off, not much, just to make sure we get a good connection. Actually, I'm gonna take a little more off. Okay, so now that I've got that done, we need some butt connectors and what I'm going to do is I need to also wire this in and the reason why I want to wire this in is because I still want to be able to use my my light if this one happens to break or if you have like one of those yellow techs or something else that you're going to put in there and to be charging like a, a GoPro so I'm going to have to strip these ends as well
There we go. Okay, so I'm going to have to connect these up. So this one has black and gray, this one has black and white. So the black is going to go with the black and the white with the gray. All right, so just take my white and white, or in this case, white and gray, and kind of twist those together. And I'm going to take my book connector, and we're going to crimp that. You can use regular pliers. I have a crimping tool. are in there nice and tight. Now I like to put heat shrink on these and so um, let me grab some heat shrink and you just have to make sure that you've got a size that fits over your buck connector. So if you need to go a size a little bit bigger than you think then that's fine and actually this one isn't going to fit. So I think I have to go up to this size go since obviously this is in a boat you want to keep things as waterproof as possible so I've got that on there now and then I need to do uh, the same with the white actually what I'm going to do is connect in the blacks first um, so so my black wire coming up just get it routed properly Again, so now I'm going to twist them together. You could do this with pliers. I prefer not to because in my experience the, the wires start to kind of fray a little bit if I'm using pliers doing that. Okay, get it in there. And crimp that part down. Looks like I, I just missed it. There we go. Give it a little tug. Yep, that's good. Get another heat shrink on there. Now this heat shrink is so short that I'm going to have to put one on the other side too. You want anywhere where water could leak in to be heat shrunk. All right, so next I just have the one wire and I connect these in. So this is the white one. In this case, it's gray. And then give that a good crimp. Oh, hang on, almost blew it. Need to get the heat shrink on there first. Can't tell you how many times I've done that. I'm sure some of you guys have done the same mistake, and that's why you're watching these videos. Okay, get that in there good. take this around make it a little easier on myself so the bend in the wire is kind of fighting me on the angle that I want to crimp that at okay so now we got it okay this should be much better and Always give it a pull, it came loose, so I missed it a little bit. Do it again, not a big deal. That looks like I got it. There we go. All right, and then I get the heat shrink over both sides, and then I'll, I'll melt those down. Again, you can use a lighter or a match. Um, I prefer, use, prefer to use a heat gun because it's just a little safer, but if you don't have one, um, you could try a blow dryer. I've never done that myself. Um, but I'm, I'm guessing it would work just fine. Um, but you have to get it kind of close. All right, last one, and we'll be all hooked up. I 
Again, the angle. This is going to want to try to fight me. It's there's a little bit of tension on here, so the wire is trying to pull. There we go. I think I got it at the right angle, so it won't fight me too much. Yep, it's in there. Get it cramped, give it a little pull. Oh, it did pull out. So we have to shove that back in there and crimp it again. Obviously having somebody to help you with this makes the job easier because somebody could be holding the side and uh, it'd make it much, much easier. There we go. Alright, so now, before I do all the heat shrink and everything, what I'm going to do is turn the battery on and see if the light works. If the light works, we're good to go. If not, then I gotta check out my crimping. So, here we go. Just turn my battery on right there. Okay. Let's come over here. And turn on my nav lights. Oh, that's the aerator, sorry. Nav anchor, there we go. And look at that. There's the light, shiny bright. That's an LED light, so that'll give off a lot of illumination, and you can see around it 360 degrees, which is the law. You need to be able to see around it. Um, some people buy lights that are aftermarket lights, and they only light up one direction. So that's how we do it. I'll just uh, have you guys watch me do the heat shrink, and then that'll conclude the video. All right, so I got my heat shrink gun, or my uh, heat gun. I ch chose to use the narrow tip, because I want to focus it, and I'm letting it heat up for a little while. And then all you're gonna do is start bringing it close, and kind of move it around. You can see it shrinking down. Be careful not to get it too close. And that's it. So, the only thing left to do is put all the wiring back in, allow these to cool, which they're just fine now. So get all my wiring back down into the hole. And I've got the light still on, so I can see that it's working still. So the light is still on, I know you can't see that. And then just put in my, my screws and this is complete. So I'll, lip, I'll, I'll uh, put in the description below some of the tools I used and how to access those. You can click on the link and it'll take you to, to uh, Amazon where you can see the prices on things and buy them if you want to. Uh, other than that, it was a pretty simple process. I would say if I wasn't filming, this probably would have taken me less than 15 minutes. Very, very simple. And now I do have a backup power light that I can use anytime, but the goal is to never use that again. And I do not have a GoPro that I put into one of these mounts, but again, if I did, I could use that and still have the light working, uh, the aftermarket light that I just bought. So, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, please hit, hit a link or a subscribe and thumbs up if you enjoyed these videos. I have a lot of videos on how to fix things in your boat. I have a lot of uh, videos on my hummingbird units and things like that. So, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.